Hey there, it's Brittany, and I am back with my uh, haul video from African Village. So I went to African Village actually three separate times, twice in one day because I forgot something and went back. Um, I got some stuff to make some boutique bead strands, but I'm not going to really be going into that because I don't really know how those are going to look so far. Um, but I'm going to show you what I got for my personal stash and um, some hints for the future. Uh, okay, so my favorite seller there. Um, just has these enormous, and I do mean enormous tables, just chock full. He's got to have like maybe like 100, 200 feet worth of beads piled like long ways and then up two or three feet. It's just, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. If you watched my um, hauls from last year, you'll, you'd see what, what I was talking about. But I will show you some beads I got from him and then some other sellers at... Um, African Village. So this strand is very long and I kind of want to just wear it as is or frame it. It was $25. It's probably the most expensive African strand I've purchased. I am thinking about that. <laughs> but it's so long and if I wanted to break it up I can make tons of um, projects out of it. So I mean it's huge. It's huge. It's like two feet long, three feet long maybe. All right. So there's that. I'm just randomly pulling stuff out of this bag. Um, these I thought were so neat. It's just um, the rondelles or, or hishi beads. They're glass. Um, I love the thought of the like neutrals. I was really trending towards neutrals this trip. I did end up getting a lot of really fun, colorful stuff, but a lot of the stuff that drew my eye this time were neutrals. And I love that it has a rainbow, rainbow full of other glass colors inside of that neutral beige so it's a pretty long strand I think this one was one of the more expensive strands I got at his um, booth and it was ten dollars then we have these I thought it looked like an, a 90s cartoon I had to get it like Rocco's modern life or something yellow and red it's almost like mustard ketchup but not <laughs> The way my brain associates things, I got to tell you, but I just thought these were so fun and I needed them. Again, another um, strand that is neutral, so brownish beige and white. Um, again, some more neutrals. I thought these would go well together in a project, brown and uh, white, or beige and white. Some white Ashanti beads. Sometimes I have to get like just the boring colors because you can't every project doesn't need like a bright orange right <laughs> um, another strand of beige but in the Ashanti shape um, this one okay I this called to my soul because it's red and turquoise together but the whole strand is just kind of random I've never seen this in African glass before it's like a translucent turquoise mixed with red and white and then at the other end there's some blue and green hanging out I, I kind of feel like I just need to make a necklace that has asymmetric turquoise with red like just like this and save some of the beads obviously but isn't that so cool oh that strand's one of my favorites and then these I thought you know these would be great for Christmas they look like foliage they look like holly to me but I mean eventually I'll use them in something and maybe it won't even be Christmas maybe it'll be something that's like um greenery or flower or nature or plant focused but I just I thought of holly when I picked those up Some more Ashanti beads in a pale blue. I can never buy Ashanti beads outside of African Village anymore because I know the markup <laughs> on like even sites that sell them for a good price. I got more of the, well, these these don't match. They, they're not the same yellow, but I just like the shape and that color. I think they were attached to these. And I was like, okay, well, I'll get these too. I think these were $8. whole strand of these because I love these that uh, last year when I got them got a couple strands of these because I just think they're so perfect for so many different projects aren't these neat turquoise and white and green and red somebody in my neighborhood got a drum set or something because I've heard non-stop terrible drumming for like the last couple weekends and it's just either that or I, I swear I heard this when I first moved in but it stopped and I don't know if somebody's going through something but 
drum is drums aren't their forte. <laughs> I feel bad saying that, but we we should move to a different um a different instrument, babe. <laughs> I got these. I thought they were so cool. They're not the tr traditional like some of them are the traditional African brass color. It's looking a little washed out on my uh, my phone screen, but uh, they're a little bit more vibrant in in real life. And then some of them have like almost a coppery color. And I loved them because they had little suns on them. Then a multicolor strand. These I got because they looked like little mushrooms. I know they're not mushrooms, but they reminded me of mushrooms. And I think they could go kind of well with that to make that cottage core look. And then I got several strands of these because I tend to use them like crazy because they're such a beautiful color. So that's what I got from my favorite seller the first time I went to, um, the first time I went to African Village. I did buy a whole bunch again from him um, the next time I went. Um, some of that I'm not gonna show because that's gonna be included in my future sales. But then another seller I went to had a bunch of bone and brass beads that I really liked. So I got these, these are bone. They look like a shanty beads, but they're bone, they're gray. I got these for my stash. I got these because I hadn't seen that before. Um, and then Julie like saw them and she's like, can you please go back and get me some when you go? And I said, fine. So her strand's over to the right here. <laughs> um, these were, I think $15. Unfortunately, I found a seller who had all of these bone beads for $5 less a strand at Gem Mall, but even at the price that I bought them for, they were a steal. Like bead chest, other sellers online sell them for double what that I bought them for. So I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Plus the people I bought them from, like I'm not just buying from like a wholesaler of beads in, who got cheap plastic beads from China, right? Like these people are hand making these beads in Africa to feed their family. So I'm okay with paying $5 extra. Um, so I got these, just the artistry that goes into these beads is amazing. More hand carved bone beads and more hand carved bone beads. So that was all one seller at African Village. That was the first day I got there. I did put a significant dent in my budget the first day I went to <laughs> Tucson, but, um, and then I got these from one seller. He had some, and I didn't take a picture. I don't know why I didn't do this, but he had some beautiful um, Millifiori beads, but, and every time I was like, how much are these? It's like $700. I was like, okay, they're going to stay here. And there was another one that was eight fifty, and it was just like beautiful. It looked like comic book colors and it just looked like somebody took so long to make these beads. It was so cool. I wish I would have taken a picture, but I had these on my list. These were $10. They've got like that granite look in the middle and white on the outsides. I want to pick uh, a strand of pink, but I didn't find any. Then I went back to African Village just the last day I was there because I needed some green beads. I used all of these up at Christmas during the 20 days of uh, the 12 days of Christmas last year. So I needed more. I had to get a yellow strand for myself. Got these for myself. They're so awesome. So cool. And I think I'm gonna, before I put all these away, I think I'm gonna wash these beads. I got a bead, like a jewelry sonic washer for myself for Christmas, but I think I'm just gonna use soap and water in my sink for these. Got two strands of these, cause I hadn't seen them before and I thought they were so awesome. I bought these for myself because again, they had like a star sun shape on them. And then I got more crobo beads for myself. I thought these were pretty cool with the teal. And then these were pretty neat. And then these are the same, but different colors. So I got a nice pale pink. It's hard to find that pale pink with crobo beads or these are sand cast, but for African beads, it's hard to find that pale pink with a design. Um, they do have them with solid colors and then a nice orangey coral. Just so pretty. Got an opaque white, loving these. Such an interesting color combo. It's yellow, brown, and red. Some gray shanty beads. Like a khaki green, olivey color. And then I thought these were awesome. They're like a ruby red. Really cool shape. And then I hadn't seen these. Um, I actually went back with Rachel on the last day of the shows and we shopped um, Rachel from uh, Sam's Bead Shop. Um, 
shop the the stalls and she found this one I thought they were so cool they're not white hearts they're just African glass in like a really pale, like dusty pink I thought they were so pretty I got these which actually didn't realize how cool they were until just now I don't even remember picking these up honestly these are awesome got a black strand love the shape of these and then look at this color combo love it so some of these might make and I have a bunch of beads off to the side that I'm not showing that are gonna just like regular colors of the recycled glass um, I don't know what I'm doing with them yet but they'll be they'll be available in the future <laughs> I know that's like the most vague I could possibly be but that's where what I can say and then um, last but not least at the African Village I saw my favorite guy his name is Kaiser and um, I bought a bunch of those Afghani pendants that we all like and um, I will be selling some eventually I'm showing you the ones that I'm keeping there are well some of these I might not keep most of these I will there is a whole bag of some that I will be selling in my bead group at some point or online somewhere so I, I'm on the fence on if I'm keeping this one this is probably one of the best um, not quality but best condition I've seen like there isn't any cracked glass it's not too dirty it's just so huge I love it this one I haven't seen this style before so I'm keeping this actually all of these that I'm going to show you I'm keeping look at the little hearts at the bottom just a plain one I'm not um, sure if I'm keeping this one or not because they do have a plain one but I love the concentric um, squares I like how solid this one is and it's got some little dangles at the bottom I'd probably take out the fabric pieces these are all so dirty they need to be washed this uh, is not even one of these pendants I just really liked it and stuck it in the bag <laughs> so I feel like I would have to put a bail on this I just think it's so cool I love this because I think that's carnelian if not it's glass that's made to look like carnelian and it's in brass so beautiful the hands are so dirty another one like this this does have some broken glass I don't care when it comes to these these are these are vintage they're not making these anymore you cannot get them if they're not already out of Afghanistan at this point um, from what I have been told several times from many different people um, they're dirty if you want to clean them absolutely I think I will try cleaning some of them gently with like maybe a toothbrush or my sonic cleaner um, but they're supposed to look aged they are antique like they're not antique but they're very vintage this one so cool hadn't seen anything like that before I love the little things on the sides oh this one I can hang something else off the sides I love these submarine shaped ones. I have, I kept several for myself, but I do have some in the sale pile too. Love the hearts on the bottom. This one's just a neutral, all silver. This one is much bigger and I love the primary colors on the front. Love the large dangles. Yes, you do have to get used to the noise they make, but they're such a special piece. Oh, like even just on a chain, I think this one would look great. I don't even think this one needs beads. This is pretty heavy. It's a cool shield looking one. I love it. Even if I didn't keep on these dangles, I would keep those for a different project. They're so cool. This one's very similar, but it has a nice pale blue stone in the middle. I really liked that. And the, the, the little dangles have flowers on them. I like this one because it was it, ha it has like little blue seed beads embedded in it again this is one that I'm gonna try uh, cleaning I, I think I'm gonna try putting it in my sonic cleaner today um, I won't be heartbroken if something happens to it because I, I really just didn't pay that much for it but um, I want to see what what my sonic cleaner can do and then if that doesn't do anything I want to see what a toothbrush and some Dawn soap can do I just love this one I think it's so cool it's got that awesome floral it's kind of caved in because somebody might have crushed it at some point um, I love the flowers I actually could probably get make a 
a stamp of this by getting a mold of it. I think that would be cool. I do have another one that's going to be for sale, but you would have to put on a bail on the back or something because one of these rings came off. Um, from the same seller, I got this bone uh, button pendant. It's like a pendant or a button. Love that. I want that for a bracelet. Got this. It has a bone centerpiece in it. I hadn't seen one like that before. This little tiny one. <laughs> this is so cute. This one's plain. I love the little X's around the outside. And it looks like it used to have some like, maybe inlaid blue enamel or, or lapis or something. I could recreate that by painting and then um, putting some um, resin over it or something. Um, this little guy, I actually don't think I'm going to keep this one. I thought, I don't know why he's in my keep pile. It might have made it in there by mistake, but he'll probably go in the sale pile. Uh, this one's just so interesting. I don't think this would be the focal. I think this would be an addition to something else. Oh, whoopsie. I'll have to get that guy back on there. But just so cool. Such a cool texture. And then last but not least, look at this one. It's gold. It's so cool. Oh, I just, I, I'm not saying I was born at the wrong time because I absolutely do not want to live in any other past. <laughs> but the stuff that comes from the past is super cool. I do love old stuff, um, bead wise, I would say. So um, let me know. This was a big video. Let me know what your favorite was. Have you been to African Village? Do you want to go? Um, what was your favorite thing? What, do you, what would you like to see me use? And uh, stay tuned for Goldie. She's super cute. I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye. I know my desk is a hot mess, but I decided to bust out my um, Sonic Ultrasonic Cleaner. This is the first time I'm using it. I got it um, on Amazon after Christmas with a gift card. And um, you can choose how long you want something in there. I just chose the factory setting of 180 seconds. I'm going to put it my microphone next to it so you can kind of hear what it sounds like. It's not, it's not too loud. So it like I have a, a, an issue with some sounds. So I didn't know if this was going to be okay for me, but it is fine. Um, and we'll see. I put that um, pendant in there and once it's finished, I'll show you what it did, whether it removed a lot of dirt, whether it kind of maybe knocked loose some stones. It did say if you have jewelry that has, this is really for cleaning fine jewelry and maybe costume jewelry, but that's okay. I'm going to use it for what I want to use it for. Um, but it did say if you have loose stones, don't put it in there. <laughs> so um, I, like I said, I don't really care what happens to this. This is just like a test. So we'll see what it looks like once it's finished. All right. So it's finished. I'm just going to open it up. There's a little basket in there. I'm going to see if I can lift up my um, a tripod so you can kind of see what's going on in there and there, I see some dirt floating at the top but the basket comes out so you can grab your item um, I don't think it really lifted that much sediment from my piece but the thing is I think it's probably got some loose dirt on it to where I can take a toothbrush they did say you can take a toothbrush and kind of uh, get in there afterwards but it might have loosened up some of the old dirt that's in there I gotta say this stuff was packed with dirt so I probably will take a toothbrush it is a lot better I wish I would have done a before and after I'm gonna go grab a screen grab of what this looked like before and uh, I'll, we'll compare it to what it looks like now And then I will grab a toothbrush and I'm going to take some Dawn dish soap and go in there with my, um, with my toothbrush, not my toothbrush, but a toothbrush, <laughs> but I can already see like it did help bring out some of the silver that was hanging out. So I'm going to clean that up and, uh, I'll show you how, what the effects are after um, I've done that. All right, I put a hand towel down. I keep these toothbrushes in my um, clay studio because they're good for cleaning things, good for painting things, good for texturing things, and they're just old ones that um, 
I used to use and then I once I didn't need them as a toothbrush anymore I put them in the dishwasher clean them off and then put them in my bead studio so good thing to save them from the landfill and they're so different from each other that you get get different uses out of them <laughs> I got a little Tupperware thing full of soapy water I thought I would show you the process instead of just describing it and um, I have a towel here so I'm not worried about my work surface I'm gonna go in with this one it seems it'll be a little bit more um, robust than the other toothbrush. I'm just gonna kind of get in there. This is caked on like these things are like 20 plus years old probably some of them closer to 40 so that dirt could have been in there a very long time. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but I don't see why it wouldn't. Well, we're getting some of it around the stones. As you can see, there's not as much buildup around the stones anymore. You know, there's somebody out there who's probably cringing, but it's okay. I'm not hurting it taking that dirt, that really caked on dirt off. If you really wanted to go after it, you could use a Dremel, but I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> and I think what's going to end up happening is some of this is just so embedded in there that um, it's going to stay there. Look how dirty the toothbrush is. Yummy. <laughs> so what I'll do after um, I'm finished with brushing it is I'm going to put it back in the cleaner just to get whatever loose dirt that's still on it off and the soap and I'll be finished because this is 6,000% cleaner than it was a minute ago when I first showed you um, because I could literally feel the dirt coming off onto my fingers. And this just makes me feel like this is way more sturdy and less fragile than I originally thought it was, which is great. It'll last a very long time. And I know a lot of people are like, how do you wash beads? Soap and water, depending on what kind of what bead it is. If it's glass, it's open water. Clay, depending on the clay. Ceramics, open water. Um, wood, you want to be careful. Sometimes you don't want to wash those, depending on what the finish is. Metal, you want to be careful again. I know this is metal. This toothbrush got super dirty. Then I'll have to go back in the dishwasher. Yeah, this is even softer. But it's creating more suds, so I wonder if it's getting in there more. None of these stones are loose, which is great. This was really well made. So beautiful. I mean, it was beautiful before, but it just looks a little different now. FYI, if I sell any of these, I'm not cleaning them. So this is the way, if you buy one from me in the future, to clean them. Okay, I'm going to put this back in the cleaner for another 30 seconds just to get everything, all the loose gook off of it. Okay, here's the final look. I'm going to um, put it do a split screen if I can later or right here in the video just so we can see what it looked like before. But um, yeah, we got a lot of the schmutz off of this. <laughs> it looks a lot better. It smells a lot better. It feels a lot cleaner. Um, 
and it, it got me to test some of my equipment so I like it I think this is nice we can at least see that these are more blue now than they were um, and I'm not really seeing a whole lot of just caked on dirt anymore now it's just patina and tarnish which gives my piece um, some interest instead of just being a dirty piece and now I wouldn't worry about wearing this with one of my my shirts or anything so I'll probably end up doing that for quite a few of my pendants because sometimes I'm just like ooh, what am I touching <laughs> but anyway thank you so much for watching let me know if you liked watching me clean this and um, have a good day bye bye hi are you pouting because I wouldn't pet you anymore yeah you're pouting up there huh Hi, Goldie. You're a good girl. Are you excited when you roll, you wag your tail? Can you wag your tail? A little bit. Hi, Goldie. Yeah, that's a good girl.